tell a lot from someone's personality from just their handwriting. I write my name a lot because I sign my name on letters, so um, I think I really like to write my name. In my opinion, um, my name is pretty balanced in like the heights and the widths, and I've also gotten lots of practice. Handwriting is, is a form of art and it changes and grows and becomes better in so many ways. My dad told me when I was really little that there is a saying in Chinese that basically says that before a person knows you as a person, the first thing they will see is your handwriting. And if your handwriting is neat, they will know you are a good person. Over quarantine last year, I picked up pen paling. I will make envelope art and take pictures of it and then upload it to my mail account and then send it out to my pen pals around the country and the world. I went from my penmanship to creating hand-lettered uh, designs in my early, my first jobs as a graphic designer um, where I, you know, everything was done by hand. And then I slowly transitioned f into computer work. My favorite thing to write? Definitely my name. My name is Zheng Zhiyong. I am from China. My hometown is Chengdu, Sichuan. After I graduated from school, I found a job in Beijing and moved there. After that, I moved to the U.S. around five years ago. People would like bring their colorful, cool brush pens and then we would practice during class. Getting bored and doodling with people was kind of what made me get creative with handwriting. It looks so effortless and easy. When I picked up a pen and tried to do it effortlessly, it did not look like that at all. It kind of takes time. Um, how I learned it through YouTube is actually when you go a downstroke, you angle um, the brush more towards the paper and then also push harder on the paper. And then on upstrokes, you're supposed to be lighter and then angle it higher so that upstrokes are thinner and downstrokes are thicker. Um, I think the pen paling community, we take inspiration from each other, which I think is interesting. So I think in contrast to us having huge differences based on where we live, I think our digital community and our community through pen paling actually creates similarities. My grandmother was very sweet, very kind, but very strict. When we came home at the end of the day, she would sit down with us for at least an, an hour and we would do penmanship exercises, preparing us for smooth transitions of letters. I love the feeling of actually using more of the arm when I create my letter, my written word, because it does create a smooth line. I do pride myself in the fact that I thought I improved a couple of my capital letters because I think that they flow better than the traditional directions given me back then. And I know when I'm, when I'm being a rebel. <laughs> There's a specific paper, the kind of paper on which you write Chinese calligraphy. When we were little, I didn't have that much money for paper because that kind of paper is really expensive. So I would write on newspaper and after practicing for a while, I would go and buy the paper and write those characters on the actual paper. Over the course of history, you see different people write different kinds of calligraphy. And for each different kind, each one has a different standard. For regular people, they look at what the experts say. For each different one, like Kaishu, the one that I know, it is about writing really clearly and uniformly so that it looks really neat. But there are other kinds, like Tsaoshu, where you almost, exp almost like express yourself and you don't need to be very neat. It's more about how you feel. There are different things that they say about calligraphy. For example, in Li Shu, each stroke should be full, kind of like a caterpillar's head. And then in the end, it should be thin, kind of like a bird's tail. When you are reading and writing pages and pages of like 
your writing about your life and your interests, I think that's when you really get to know someone as opposed to, you know, meeting someone at school and then you text back and forth sometimes. You don't really um, have an outlet to go in depth about yourself. Well, I think um, as it's, it's, it's probably hard to even, um, even understand the importance of handwriting. We corresponded with our friends and passed notes in class. Instead of texting each other, we would you know, pass notes and our handwriting was part of being kind of cool. I felt like my penmanship was kind of part of my identity. The oldest character for Moon looks like this. The seal script looks like this. Juenshu. Now, this is the lesser seal script. Xiaojuan. This is clerical script. Li Shu. And this is the regular script, Kai Shu, which is the official way of writing characters in our current time. Here's the cursive, Cao Shu, and running script, Xing Su. Both of these contain more personality and emotion than the previous several kinds. For each of my pen pals and friends, I have a stack of letters that is tied together in my box of letters. And that is so special. I mean, I don't usually do this, but if I wanted to in the future, I could untie that stack and then read through all of our letters and look at the art and the small things that they sent. And that's literally a representative of our friendship and what we were talking about. Whereas texts and emails and calls and even face-to-face -face interactions, they kind of fade away. My mother herself is so important in, in my life as an artist. And she, she would place all these calligraphic handmade tags in the back of all of her um, custom clothes clothes that she made. She made such a loving home for us back in Montana. We were, you know, my dad was a, a mailman and she just stayed home with the kids and we lived in a little, a little house, almost like a little bungalow with six children and, and she, we didn't have a lot of money or anything, but she, she just used her artistic uh, talents to create like a life of beauty for all of us. And, um, yeah, she, it kind of makes me sad. I'm grateful to her because she opened my world to, to art and to just taking time to be inspired by the beauty around us. And so if in, in, the, in, the simple, in the simple gesture of writing a letter or a little note in my uh, lunchbox, it was painstakingly created. And I think, you know, all of that has inspired me in my life. My friends that I made along the way, I will definitely keep in co close contact with. For example, when he sees a beautiful calligraphy art, he will send it to me. And when I see something great, I will also send it to him. Sometimes these inspirations come while we travel around the world. And it is always really fascinating to talk about calligraphy and share our views on the great works and improve ourselves too. This is definitely a friendship that will last a lifetime. I think it's a really good meditative way to just relax. Everything is so hurried nowadays, so I think it's really nice to be in the moment, like right now, be present right now, and really focus on your every move. I think that everyone should pen pal. <laughs> everyone should send letters to people. I think even though everything is moving online at a rapid pace, I think handwriting and making handmade cards and letters for people is still a very meaningful thing to do. When you're writing calligraphy, you have to be really focused 
and you don't think about other things. It's kind of like a way of being calm and a way to reflect on yourself. When you are writing calligraphy, you kind of become more of a calm person. You are not so anxious and nervous about everything at the same time. You kind of just sit yourself down and be present in the moment.